Hello and welcome to this special broadcast this evening because some big news that's been breaking this evening. It was meant to be a day for runaway liquor baron Vijay Malia's extradition case to India to be finally entering its last stage. Yet Mr. Malia has now courted a controversy. This time has come out smoking during the hearing and alleged that he met Finance Minister Arun Jaitley on the day he left the country. As a result, a massive political firefight has now erupted with the finance minister claiming that he had not given any appointment to Mr. Malia since 2014, but it was a chance meeting in the corridor of parliament where Mr. Malia was the, an MP and claimed that he had asked Mr. Malia to settle his dues with the banks. Let's listen in first to what Vijay Malia said. I left because I had a scheduled meeting in Geneva. I met the finance minister before I left, repeated my offer to settle with the banks. I've said before I'm a political football and uh, there's nothing that I can do about it. My conscience is clear. I put almost 15,000 crores worth of assets on the table in front of the Honorable High Court of Karnataka. And I have nothing much more to say. I am certainly a scapegoat. I feel like a scapegoat. Let's just listen into what the opposition has to say because they've seized on the issue of Mr. Malia claiming that he met the finance minister on a day he left the country to suggest that Mr. Jaitley had advised Mr. Malia to leave the country. Listen in. Well, the phrase used by Malia today is that he met the finance minister. I know there is a clarification, but met the finance minister does not suggest a passing casual walking meeting inside the House of Rajya Sabha or in Parliament. I think a more categorical and a more detailed response must be had. We have had earlier photographs of Mr. Nira Modi and others being photographed in Gujarat and in, uh, in, in Switzerland with the Prime Minister. We have had other several examples of proximity I think given the fact that a, two things have been said by Malia, one that he met, which suggests some kind of a formal structured meeting, and two, that he offered a settlement, which means some kind of a detailed structural offer. I think we need proper disclosures, full inquiries, and the moot question remains, at that time, why was no action taken in view of the knowledge of such situations? in terms of allowing him to leave. This is a fact that all of us had known earlier. Now that it has come out in the open, from the horse's mouth itself, and whatever denials that the government may issue, the fact of the matter is even the finance minister accepts that he made, the, he said something to that effect. Now it is, a, it only confirms the fact that all these people who have looted our public money by taking loans from the banks and absconded from the country, not one of them has happened to leave the country without the knowledge of the government. Okay, those were of course the views of Sitaram Yechuri and Abhishek Manu Singhvi. The opposition is seizing on this moment. Rahul Srivastava has just spoken to Arun Jaitley. Let's find out what uh, the finance minister has told him. The opposition, Rahul says, the finance minister must come clean on the nature of his meeting with Vijay Malia. What exactly did Arun Jaitley tell you when you spoke to him a short while ago? Rajiv, the finance minister is saying that uh, the meeting that uh, Mr. Malaya is referring to is not a structured meeting nor a substantive meeting. What the finance minister is saying is that on the day, uh, on the night, uh, apparently later when it became clear that he has fled the country, uh, Malaya had come to parliament and being a Raj Sabha member of parliament, though his term was about to end very soon, he uh, accosted the finance minister.
there was this brief 30 40 second chat between them in which he said that he wanted to settle but the finance minister had very categorically told him that this is an issue you go to the bankers if you want to settle what the finance minister is saying that he had already bluffed his way through for a very long time with everybody with offers of settlement and that is why nobody wanted to meet him or give him any kind of endorsement as far as a government intervention is concerned since he had starved the bank with any kind of response the banks within two days were going to move the supreme court a consortium of 17 banks for 9000 crores worth of recovery he was trying to create a smoke screen by trying to create a diversion that he's talking to the government and there was a brief meeting now if that is the meeting vijay malaya is talking about rajdeep and that's the meeting that finance minister arun jaitley is saying i would like to introduce here that uh, there was a large number of journalists who were waiting right there and I was one of them who saw this brief interaction take place. Is Mr. Malaya talking about this meeting or was there any other structured meeting? The finance minister says this was the only meeting. We also know that Rajdeep, that day we were told by the prime minister's office that he was trying to meet the finance prime minister also but since the schedule of the prime minister was packed in parliament, there were several adjournments, there was no meeting and a meeting was denied. Now, correct me, when did Vijay Malia leave the country? We are talking about February of 2016, am I right? Rajiv, uh, uh, Mr. Malia fled the country on March 2nd, if my memory serves right. And that day was the 1st of March when uh, it was the presentation of the finance bill, I recall, had happened inside the Rajya Sabha. The finance minister was coming out of the Rajya Sabha after presenting the finance bill and there was a ruckus in parliament and there was an adjournment because of which the finance minister who was inside the Raj Sabha was walking back to the room of the finance minister at the entrance to the what is called the lobby uh, area there the meeting took place. Now Mr. Vijay Malaya has to clarify that is this the meeting he is talking about because the finance minister is saying that this was the only meeting which was neither substantive nor structured. Okay. Raul, I've got a sense of what you're doing. Let's then go straight. Let's then go straight to our face-off this evening. Joining us now on our face-off this evening, Sambit Patra of the BJP and Sanjay Jha of the Congress. Appreciate both of you joining us here on India Today. Sambit Patra, the question directly to you, purely in perceptional terms. The fact that the finance minister was meeting Vijay Malia was then a member of parliament and was facing a slew of charges that the banks were mounting against him. In October of 2015, a lookout notice circular was issued at the request of the CBI after the FIR had been registered. How am I to understand that that very evening, as Mr. Malia says, he went on a scheduled trip to Geneva. It seems it was business as usual. There was no attempt being made to put pressure on Mr. Malia at that moment by the government or indeed the finance minister to say pay up or else. A few points over here, Mr. Rajdeep. Though Mr. Arun Jaitley, the finance minister, has already uh, in fact written out his version. But by the same logic that Mr. Malia throws and that you have questioned me, that since he was present in the parliament and he was meeting Mr. Arun Jaitley, mm -hmm. by the same logic he was meeting Mrs. Sonia Gandhi as well. Because in the same parliament, Sonia Gandhi was also present. In the same parliament, other parliamentarians were also present. So of course, while walking across the corridors, while exchanging greetings, if he can say, quote, Unquote, there meeting. are those who are saying it was more than PL but Punia, the, Congress leader uh, says it was a two hour meeting. It wasn't an PL exchange Punia of meetings. Arun Jaitley is claiming no, no, it's an exchange of. Uh, so, how? Let, let's no, listen into Jaitley. Let's listen into Mr. Jaitley. No? Just listen into Mr. Jaitley. He paced up towards me in the parliament building and suggested that he was going to make some offer of settlement. I did not even bother to get any detail from him. I curtly told him that he must go and make it to the bankers because I was fully aware that he had been bluffing on several occasions in the past and had no intention of paying back the bankers' money. Besides this one ex sentence exchanged, where he literally barged on to 
be while I was walking and tried to make some offer or a suggestion which I refused to entertain. There is no question of my having ever met him, spoken to him. I even did not receive any paper from him at that time. And therefore, to convey an impression that uh, he met me with an offer of settlement, well, if this is what he is referring to, yes. then I am sure this is factually not correct. He must come out with the complete facts. Vijay Malaya ka ye bayan ki unho ne mujhse mulaqat ki aur koi settlement ka prastavna ki ye bilkul asatya hai. Okay, then now Sambit Patra, we've got the finance minister once again on record making it very clear that this was just a chance meeting and he told very clearly, Mr. Malia, please go to the bankers, I have nothing to do with this. But at the same time, questions will arise because PL Punya Congress leader is claiming a day before that he saw the finance minister have a two hour long meeting with Vijay Malia according to him. So what am I to understand? I repeat, October 2015, there is a lookout circular of the CBI. Yes, he's a member of parliament. And on March 2, 2016, he flees on a day he claims to have met the finance minister. No, Rajdi, first and foremost, I don't understand whether Mr. Malia briefs Mr. Punia. How does Mr. Punia know that there was a two-hour long meeting with Mr. Arun Jaitley? Was he standing outside Mr. Arun Jaitley's room as guard? He claims what, he saw he it. Did post any detective or a spy out there to, Mr. Rajdeep Sardasai, you have to allow the others to speak when you have asked a question and you have repeated your words umpteen number of times that he claims he saw it. You cannot see a person for two hours, Mr. Rajdeep Sardasai. You can see a person getting into or out of the room, but you would not pry over the person for two hours to see whether the person was spending two hours time with someone. So Mr. Punia, in fact, should be should in fact be questioned and interrogated as to how he was briefed by Mr. Vijay Malia. How did Mr. Vijay Malia say that Mr. Jaitley and he met for two hours? Was Mr. Vijay Malia keeping in touch with Congress spokespersons? Number one. Now, number two, here is the letter of Mr. Vijay Malia. If you consider whatever Mr. Malia is saying is true, then let me pull out this letter dated 15th April 2016, which I, you, both of us have debated. In this letter, he says that this present government discriminates against Mr. Malia because this present government's SFIO, CBI, and Enforcement Directorate, mm. all of them are pouncing on him and has made a poster boy of default out of an innocent person like Mr. Vijay Malia. He himself says, and in one of his paragraphs, he said, I have good reason to believe that this government agencies, CBI, SFIO, ED are now dealing with me in a highly prejudicial manner, despite full cooperation. It has been further stated that I have been personally brought I have personally brought the private sector into disrepute thus. So he says that this government, in fact, is prejudiced let, against him. Let in Sanjay the last Jhana paragraph, he concludes saying that there is discrimination against discrimination against me by the government. Just 10 more seconds. Just 10 more seconds, Rajdeep Ji, and thereafter, Mr. Jha can come in. Now I produce a very important letter, which I would request Rajdeep. your channel to close up and show. This letter is mother of all letters. This letter dated 4th October 2011. I would request the camera person to please no, close no, this I, up. Tell this us what it says, Mr. Mr. Malia writes to the then Prime This is a letter which, the, uh, which Mr. Malia writes to the then Prime Minister, Mr. Uh, 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 Manmohan Singh thanking him the thank you sir that you gave me an appointment and thank you despite the fact that i am an npa non-performing asset you agreed that my loans would be given to me i thank you that you directed your secretary mr take a naya to take care of my needs this is a letter as you can see over here let to dr now. manmohan singh okay thanking let, him let thanking your 10 him seconds are up let sanjay ja respond sanjay ja what is very clear and as vijay malia said it today he says he's a political football He's caught between the devil and the deep blue sea, between the Congress and the BJP. And the fact is, he claims that he's actually ready to pay back his loans. He's, uh, he's ready with 15,000 crore worth of assets before the Karnataka High Court. <laughs> Settle the amount is what he claims. He's being treated as a political football. You are today attacking Arun Jaitley when Mr. Jaitley claims it was just a casual conversation. Uh, Rajdeep, it is, uh, this is not the time to be charitable towards India's finance minister. The truth is, if you had a meeting with Vijay Malia, structured or unstructured, this should have been in the public domain, voluntarily coming from him and not coming from somebody whom the BJP calls as a fugitive. Now, let me tell you this. 
Don't forget, Vijay Malia went into the Raj Sabha in his last tenure, backed mm. by the Bharatiya Janta Party. Point number two, and I'm glad you raised that point because I was going to say it anyway. It's very unusual that Mr. Mr. Jaitley says that I knew that he was, uh, you know, indulging in financial skullduggery. But when he left India, I mean, the government had removed the uh, the lookout circular that they had earlier the CBI had issued. Very, very intriguing indeed. And the third point, which is very critical here, Vijay Malia lands in London and now he's making statements in the court. Now his statement, if you look at it very carefully, he says he had a meeting, he had offers that he made. It is very presumptuous on the part of Mr. Jaitley to use the perception of you know the, some journalists like Rahul who may have seen him having a brief kind of an interaction with him in, in, in Raj Sabha and to say that that was the only meeting we had. I will bring your attention, Rajdeep, to the press conference held by the Congress party around the March 1st to 2nd when Vijay Malia disappeared to London with nine suitcases, getting a red carpet farewell given by Mr. Modi's government. Uh, the Congress press conference said that he has had meetings with a very senior leader in the BJP cabinet before he's left. We said that in a press conference, if I'm not mistaken, it was mentioned but you by Ranjit Singh Sujewala himself. Be working on so the I think there is a game. lot here which is frankly is, you speaking, seem very to dark be working, and Mr. Jha, on the perception game. You are creating the perception mm -hmm. that Vijay Malia was tipped off. Vijay Malia in that press conference today or that impromptu media conference said he had a scheduled meeting in Geneva. He intended to return to this country. He wanted right. to settle with the banks. You could ask the finance minister, why didn't he settle with Vijay Malia on that day? Why was Vijay Malia, who was ready to settle on the 2nd of March, suddenly has absconded well, very you know, a week later? Right. Well, Razib, look at, look at a couple of other cases and you'll see serial offenders who have followed the same, shall we say, procedure to go abroad. It was followed by Nirav Modi. Once again, very extraordinary. It happens just before the expose hits the public domain. Uh, look at Mehul Choksi, Mehul Bhai. Sorry, I don't want to disturb Mr. Modi's uh, you know, endearing affections for him. You have Mehul Choksi getting a clearance, by the way, from the PMO, from the Ministry of External Affairs, from SEBI, who were all aware that there were charges against Mehul Choksi and Nirav Modi's firms. How can you get a green chit for a citizenship? And I have some knowledge of foreign citizenship and I can tell you, Antigua doesn't encourage drug peddlers and you know, arm, armaments dealers and, let's come and all back, kinds let's of come uh, you know, back dangerous to Vijay Malia. You know, child let's trafficking come back, people to Mr. come. Ja they to Vijay Malia because some bit responsible Patra, there is in, in It is all Sanjay leaking ja out says. to a larger conspiracy. One minute, in that larger conspiracy, <coughs> the question that must be asked is why is it that that lookout circular issued by the CBI after the agency registered an FR against Malia, Kingfisher Airlines and others in October 2015 was not acted on till March 2nd? What is it that allowed Vijay Malia in that sense to get away? Was there a, a commitment that Mr. Malia gave that he would come back? We must be told all the details. What are no, the details that were there? That's all. No, Share the details. Not, I don't think anyone is directly accusing, uh, barring Mr. Jha at the moment, of conspiracy in a TV studio. But surely these questions must be answered. No, the irony is the conspirators are accusing of conspiracy. But let me come to the issue proper over here. As far as Malia is concerned, supposedly we know that oh, everything really? that Malia speaks, we presume oh, really? that everything that Malia speaks is true. <laughs> Then just imagine today in the court itself, Mr. Malia's lawyer stood up to say that the CBI, in fact, under Mr. Modi's regime, forced the banks, the consortium of 17 banks, <coughs> to register FIRs against an innocent Mr. Vijay Malia. That Mr. Vijay Malia was quite transparent in all his transactions. That Mr. Modi's government was discriminative against Mr. Vijay Malia, who is otherwise innocent, and forced the bank for an FIR. So by the same standard, if we are to believe Mr. Vijay Malia's every statement today, that this is also true. That means our government was discriminative towards him. Would you believe that? We firmly believe that he is a peddler of lies. We firmly believe that he has cheated the people of India. We firmly believe you that made he, him had, a, you he was made a him according to, according to Vijay oh. Malia, you made him, uh, him a poster boy. There are those who have one lakh crore in defaults who are getting price defense deals. Those with much bigger defaults in this country are being given defense deals and Vijay Malia is, going, is being subjected, according to Vijay Malia, to harassment. He claims that this, he's been made a scapegoat. 
You were looking for a scapegoat. You found one in Vijay Malia. He's ready to come back and settle. The finance minister himself says he advised Malia to go to the banks and settle. Mr. Rajdeep Sardesai, first and foremost to say that we have reduced Mr. Vijay Malia to a scapegoat while others are also existing mm. in this country. Remember what Raghuram Rajan has in fact come out with recently. He has said that most of these NPAs, rather all of these NPAs that we are talking about today were originative of the UPA era. They took birth during the UPA era. So naturally Mr. Ambani that you are suggesting or the reliance that you are suggesting, oh. none of them became what they are under Mr. Modi's rule. They were okay, what they were before we came to power Sanjay and Jha, they have quickly respond as I yeah. run out and of secondly, time quickly secondly, respond se the NPA and problem I... the problems of the Vijay okay. Malias of the world are Congress legacies and the Congress uh, didn't let, act let against them Mr. Modi acted against Vijay Malia at least he's on the run today a quick final response Quick one, Rajdeep, what Sambit Patra and Narendra Modi and Arun Jaitley won't tell the people of India is that Raghuram Rajan's most pertinent point in his report is that he has given a list of the biggest defaulters that he calls as fraud, fraudulent people. That means these are people who have swindled huge sums from the Indian banking system, which will make even Vijay Malia, and we need to condemn During Vijay Malia, time, look course. like a pygmy by comparison. But Narendra Modi's government is protecting them. There is no action. There is no action taken. And why is the Prime Minister's office says there's no not action. letting the people the of India know action, who are the, the people figuring it out? All Ram the action against them. And, and by the way, Congress I did not interrupt you. I did not Raghuram interrupt Rajan you. wrote about I them when Mr. Modi you. was PMO, but they were built in the but Congress I will years. That. In that sense, Vijay Malia is probably right. He's caught between both of you. You allowed no, him no, to build no, the NPAs, no, no. and the BJP didn't allow him to settle. No, no, no. Like, correction. Rajdeep, Rajdeep. No, no, no. Who said Rajdeep that we did not allow him to settle? He was a if bluff, you bluff settler. To interrupt he was, he, was, he the has affair. come out with all kind of bluffs and well, lies. He don't never interrupt wanted to me, settle. Patra, it and Rajdeep, if you can let me finish, please. Rajdeep, let me finish, please. Rajdeep, let me finish, because I don't want this message to get lost. Him, that he is shouting Rajdeep, that he wants to settle. Rajdeep, this is a very pertinent point. Don't allow Patra to interrupt. He was given umpteen opportunities to settle. this is not fair. He did never settle. He never came back to the country. Okay, 30 seconds. He the law. Okay, okay. Sambit, you made your point. I need to have 30 seconds, I need Sanjay to have my 30 seconds. 30 seconds quickly and 30 seconds on the clock. Bravo, mat, beta. Yeah. Let me tell you two. Yeah. Beta, who is your beta by the way? 30 seconds on the clock. The NPA during our time with the banking system was 2.65 lakh crores. Under Narendra Modi in four and a half years is gone up to almost 12 lakh crores. It can only happen if Narendra Modi's government has your given doing, multiple sir. loans that are doing and evergreen many of the loans. Okay, let's Narendra leave it Modi there, gentlemen. Arun Jaitley have to answer. Four okay, times we will they have gone up under Narendra Modi. Well, and it's required, no, no, Vijay Malia. It's required, Vijay Malia, in a sense, to put all this out in the public domain. It was Raghuram Rajan yesterday who put the cat among the pigeons with his report to a parliamentary panel. Now, Vijay Malia claiming he's been made a political football between the two sides. Remember, at the end of the day, it's the taxpayer who's wondering what happens next. Let's take a break at this point. When we return, plenty more. Thanks for watching the video. For more such news and updates, please like, share and subscribe to India Today. Also check out our other great videos from our channel, We Know You Would Love To.